happy to see you all. I'm glad that you're here. Um, I would like to point out a thank you to our keen eyes this morning. I obviously don't know what day it is. And so we have on the screen the 18th of November on your, on your handout. It's October. But it's okay because every day is the day the Lord has made. And I am grateful. And I am thankful. I am thankful that you all are here. Um, and so welcome. Actually, I think I need. Yes, I do need one. Um, I have a lot of announcements, not a lot of announcements, but I have a lot of recognitions today. Uh, the first announcement I want to share with you is this is the final week before Thanksgiving break. And so uh, that's okay. Yeah, you can, you can praise God for that. On, thurs on Thursday, we're going to have a very special time together after lunch, and so um, I, I, I hope that you're looking forward to that. I think it will be fruitful and just a, a wonderful, beautiful time for us together. Um, I think that's the only announcement I had, really. Am I missing any announcements? We're good. Um, but let's get into the recognition portion of our chapel. I have a lot. I'm excited to share a lot of these. Some of these uh, uh, recognitions, I do not actually have things to give to you. I think that they've already been given to some of you. Um, but uh, I do want to take time to recognize this morning. Uh, I'm going to start with the VFW Patriots Pen Contest. I believe all of our 7th and 8th graders participated in this, or just our 8th graders? Both. Both? Okay, 7th and 8th graders participated in this. Um, and when I call your name, I would like for you to stand for our winners. In third place for House Joan of Arc, Philip Howerter. And second place for House Tolkien, Moses Montaigne. And first place, who will also move on to districts from House Joan of Arc, Miss Emily Dixon. Well done. I'm proud of you guys. Um, I believe the DAR is coming up too, is it not? Okay, all right, so stay tuned, stay tuned for that one. Um, I'd also like to recognize our uh, honor students for, I believe this is band. Um, I mean, I have instruments next to you, so I think it's band honor students here. Uh, for percussion, house martyr Jacob Watkins. And for with uh, playing the oboe from House Joan of Arc, Miss Emily Dixon. And playing the French horn from House Tolkien, Mr. Moses Montine. Congratulations, guys. That's amazing. We also have your picture up on the foyer, so you should stop and look at your beautiful faces. Um, I want to share a little bit about archery. We had our first... Uh, Eagle Eye Tournament this past Saturday. I would like to recognize our winners. When I share your name, please stand so we can recognize you. For our girls, fourth through sixth grade, third place uh, from House Lewis, Brianna Ashwood. Second place from House Livingstone, Lizzie Hayes. And first place from House Lewis, Miss Ava Ashwood. Oh, she's on here? Oh, Ava, we love you. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, boys, fourth through sixth grade for uh, third place house, Carmichael, Gabe Houston. Second place house, Carmichael, Brooks Gruel. Your, medal. your medal's actually on my desk. I'll get that to you. This would have been a great time to give it to you. I'm sorry. Uh, and for first place from house, Joan of Arc, Garrett Irwin. Well done. Boys, 7th through 12th grade, third place from House Tolkien, Mr. Moses Montine. And second place, also from House Tolkien, Winston Nash. And first place from House Lewis, Mr. Thomas Ashwood. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, girls, 7th through 12th grade, third place from House Lewis, Brantley Malcolmson. Sorry, Tolkien, House Tolkien. Points are going to Tolkien. Sorry, Lewis. Sorry. Um, here's where I messed up. Second place from House Lewis, Anna Mary Chatterton. And first place from House Carmichael, Miss Ava Houston. 
While we're talking about archery, something has happened in archery that has not happened in the history of our archery program. We had an archer shoot a perfect 50 at 10 meters, which means she got all five of her arrows in the center, which is amazing. And she gets a 10 meter 50 pin. I'd like to uh, congratulate from House Lewis, Miss Anna Mary Chatterton. Yeah, 15 meters gold. So you gotta work on it. That's a girl. Um, I want to share with you some reading awards from October. All of you did a fantastic job. I want to encourage you to continue reading. Um, we are we're going to be sharing a little bit more details about the week of Thanksgiving. I know you're not going to be at school, but we want to continue. We want to encourage you to continue to read. Um, and so in our details, we're going to be sharing with you. There are certain types of books that if you read throughout this Thanksgiving break, they will count as double points or double days for your house. So I want to encourage you to keep reading throughout the Thanksgiving break. So on Thursday, make sure that you grab one of your reading bookmarks and take that home and read during Thanksgiving break, okay? We want to encourage you to do that. Um, I want to recognize our top readers for each house. Uh, we had a lot who read for 31 days. And, and we also had a lot that read just under 31 days. And so we're taking our top readers per house uh, and recognizing them this morning. And so we'll start off with House Martyr, uh, reading for 28 days, Kate Tafflinger. Where are you, Kate? Congratulations, well done. I'll just keep these in mind. Uh, for House Carmichael, let me get my note here. I think, uh, yeah, we read uh, 31 Days, Erica Roberts. Congratulations. Um, for House Lewis, also 31 Days, Brianna Ashwood. For House Livingston, we had two readers in House Livingston that read 31 Days total the whole month. First one to recognize is Mr. Luke Murray. Just had yours. And the second one is Mr. Wyatt Gillen Water. Okay, we have, for House Tolkien, we also had two top readers for who read 28 days, and that is Mr. Jarrett and Mr. James Royer. Well done. And last but not least, for House Joan of Arc, uh, reading a total of 31 days, Mariah Dixon. It was close, like, your siblings were one day behind you. Congratulations, I am proud of all of you. You all work so hard in all the things that you do, and I, I am thankful, so, so well done. Keep it up, keep up the good work. Um, those are all the announcements that I have. Did, am I missing announcements or, or rewards? rewards? Okay, um, let's start with, let's continue with our call out. Uh, go ahead and stand. I will read in the bold and uh, have you respond. It will also be up on the screen. We are Trinity Eagles. We do our things. What is our mission? The mission of Trinity Academy is to provide classical education, providing Christ-centered focus with academic excellence. What are our core values? Our core values are integrity, wisdom, kindness, integrity. What is wonder? What is responsibility? What is wisdom? What is kindness? What is integrity? What is legacy? And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the praise team to come up at this time. I would like to pray uh, and we will continue our time of fellowship today with worship through music. So let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. And we are grateful that you have filled it with your abundance and how you provide for us all things necessary for life and godliness. I thank you for your school. I thank you for these students and our teachers and our families. Help us, Lord, to walk in a manner pleasing to you in the things we say and the things that we do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
placed within our hearts and within our hands, may it be pleasing to you. Please be with our chapel speaker this morning. That the words of his mouth and meditation of his heart be pleasing to you. That we have ears to hear and hearts that are obedient to your truth. We ask these saints in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you this morning our chapel speaker, uh, from 8th grade, house martyr, Mr. Jacob Watkins. Hello. Good morning, Trinity students, parent dean, faculty. I'm Jacob Watkins, and I will be your chapel speaker for today. I have a visual illustration I would like to begin with. I would like to call up my brother David to help me. Okay. Now, David, I'm going to... Put this blindfold on you. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Can you see? Close your eyes. Then. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hold up a number, and then I want you to guess what the number is, okay? Quit looking. Face that way. Face the other way. Okay, <laughs> guess what the number is. It's between 1 and 5,000. Wait, what? Yeah, guess what it is. <laughs> yes! What? It is not 10. I'll hold up another one. I'll hold up another one. Same range. Same range. It's the same range, one to five thousand. Dude, hurry up. What? It's not ten. <laughs> okay, guess again. It's not ten. Okay, here are your numbers, David. <laughs> here are your numbers. Here, take them. Take them. It was, the same, it was the same number. Okay, you can go back to your seat. Yeah, you can take it. Okay. This world is very repetitive. Just like I held up the same number every time. Ecclesiastes 1, 4 through 11 gives us some examples of repetitiveness. A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. 
The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north. Around and around goes the wind, and on its circuits the, sea, the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they will flow again. All things are full of weariness, and man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, See, this is new? It has been already, in the ages before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of later things yet to be among those who come after. The sun rises and sets, generally in the same location. The wind blows around. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. All things are full of weariness, etc. We see a lot of repetitiveness in the world. Ecclesiastes 3, 11 through 13 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Despite the repetitive nature of the world, God has made everything beautiful in its time. Even though life may be difficult or confusing or repetitive, God has a plan and purpose for everything, and everything he does is beautiful. We'll come back to that later. God has also put eternity into man's heart, that is, the sense that life continues beyond this present life, so that man cannot figure out what God has done from the beginning of time to the end of time. Who here wants to understand all of life? Yep. Me too. Both our desire to understand all of life and our limitations to do so have been ordained by God. God created this vast world, inviting us to reflect on his works from beginning to the end. Through the Bible, he reveals essential truths about himself and his creation while reminding us of our limitations. Yet, in his love and wisdom, he provides everything we need to know, everything we need to know him, and walk in his ways. What is something that God has given you that you need? And raise hands. You. Life. Life? Yeah. Um, you. Yeah. Your family. Luke. A bed. A bed. Okay, one more. Yeah. Food. Yup. That's right. God gives us so much. He gives us food, water, friends, family, and most importantly, Jesus, his only son. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And 1 Timothy 1.15 says, The saying is, is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. God sent his only son as a gift to mankind to die on the cross to save all of us. We have sinned and, fought and turned against God, so we deserve eternal life with so we do not deserve eternal life with him. But God has gifted us eternal life because he loves us very much. God has made all things beautiful in its time. Although life is repetitive and sometimes difficult, God's plan is still unfolding beautifully, and one day we will soon see the beauty behind it. So rather than being frustrated by the things that God has not given you, you should rejoice and praise God for the gifts that he has given you. Thank you, Jacob. It's a good reminder. There are, are many instances that we will have today that we should be encouraged and reminded of all that God has given to us. Our, our closing song is actually uh, a good reminder of that as well. It is a psalm of David. Uh, after David, King David had found himself in sin and seeking repentance from the Lord and asking the Lord that even, even when he was going through those difficult times, for the Lord to create in him a clean heart. 
and to renew a right spirit within him. So let's stand as we sing our final song today. today. Please create in us a clean heart. Give us eyes to see you and ears to hear you and a heart that's obedient to you to know that even whatever the day may be, you bring all things beautiful in its time. We thank you. Please go with us. Lead us and guide us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day today. We'll start with kindergarten.